Jess yet. So nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. Yeah, so why don't we just go right in and tell me about yourself. You're from Vancouver, but what else can you tell me about life right now for you? Yeah, I'm Vancouver based, but right now I am in Ottawa because I'm working on some new music. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of riding the I'm not pretty wave and super, super stoked for what's to come. And this past year has been very busy for you. I think probably kind of different from maybe how other people experienced this past year a little bit. I was wondering what kind of COVID things have you done in this past year? For instance, have you cut your own hair? I cut my own hair last year in 2020. Yes, okay. I did do that. I <laughs> Hopefully it turned it. It actually turned out okay. It was, yeah. it was all right. Yeah. My personal horror story of COVID haircut. No, know. it's looking great. It's looking great. It used to be a third longer and I hadn't had a haircut in about, uh, or like a year and a half at that point. And I was like, I need to cut my hair. I have split ends on split ends. And I kind of chopped it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and did you do any toilet paper hoarding this year? This no, year? didn't do any of that. No, I uh, I got what I needed. <laughs> yeah. So are you, you're originally from Vancouver? Is that where you grew up? Yeah, I grew up on Vancouver Island. And yeah, now I just couldn't leave the, the coast. It's so wonderful. I miss it already. Like just being near the water and being able to go to the beach anytime that I want. <laughs> So you started singing before you could talk. Yes, or so I'm told. I don't remember that far back. But um, yeah, I, I was singing before I could talk and I've never really stopped. It's always just been a passion of mine. Do you remember maybe the first time that you came up with your very own song? Um, yeah, I think I started writing songs at like age 10 or 11, 12, somewhere around there. And yeah, I still remember my first song. It was, it was rough. <laughs> it was a rough song, but, um, yeah, I just never, never stopped and just kept on, kept on going and, and writing as much as I possibly could. I'm a very like selfish songwriter and like, I write for my own therapy and yeah. kind of write for my own to get me through the day. <laughs> and you went to university for vocal performance. Where did you go? Yes. Yeah, I went to McEwen University in, in Edmonton and froze my butt off there for, for five years. And uh, yeah, it was really, really fun. It was a very big learning experience for me. Is that something that you would suggest to people wanting to get into music? I know a lot of people maybe think that you're just naturally to get into music you just have to have this all this talent and then one day it'll just happen but when I mean, you went and spent five years studying yeah I mean it really comes down to like whatever you want to get out of it kind of thing so I right now like with my songwriting and everything is is kind of my natural just like write whatever you feel like writing but I definitely don't think that I I would have been I, who knows who knows where I would have been if I didn't go I'm happy that I went because it's brought me to this place in my life so um yeah I've I've made a lot of really amazing connections and you say that when people listen to your songs you want them to feel like they're sitting down and having tea with you what's yes. your, what's your favorite tea Ooh. um I think just like a really nice like cream Earl Grey. You can oh, never I go wrong with that. Grey. It's just it's just like classic, basic, but I don't know. I really, really like it. And is there a biscuit that you have with it? Cookies or what treat do you have with tea? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really I think when I have tea, I just like to just have like the warm cup of tea and hold that. I don't really go with, with like biscuits or anything. So I read that in 2019 that you felt like you hit rock bottom. Are you willing to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it was just a place in like, I don't know, when you're coming of age and, and just kind of realizing like, what do I actually want to do with my life? And, and I mean, it was after I graduated and you kind of like leave the school nest and you're like, oh my goodness, what? <laughs> what am I doing now? I'm in the real world. And so just a lot of like finding out what I want to do and who I want to be. Yeah, I think people can hit that multiple times in their life as well <laughs> something to look forward to again yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're working the same same job for a long time I think you hit that point like is this what I want anymore and like should I change and you kind of get a bit of an existential cr uh, crisis and yeah for so sure. you going through that wondering 
if music was what you were going to pursue, or I think you said you were going to maybe become a travel agent or something, have something kind of steady and normal, not normal, but, you know, steady. Totally. What helped you get through that? And what was the turning point for you? Honestly, it was lockdown. I, I kind of like COVID just stripped away, like everything, all of like the luxuries in life. And you're only able to really focus on yourself because you're just with yourself all the time (laughs) and so um i'm actually as as weird as it sounds i'm thankful for for the quarantine a little bit and the fact that it let me figure out my priorities and and see what was most important and i kind of just came to the conclusion that i wanted to be a musician and i wanted to be a songwriter and just before quarantine hit i understand that you went on a trip to indonesia as well how was that so fun oh my goodness it was a blast oh i miss it so much like i got a little notification of like this was where you were a year ago like a couple like a month ago and oh it was rough it was a rough day i was like no take me back yeah i can't even go if i want to yeah exactly what was your favorite thing in indonesia to eat Ooh. oh my goodness um I would probably say gado gado. That was a really good dish. Um, It's like just peanut sauce. Like the peanut sauce there is just so good. Um, Yeah, it's it's just peanut sauce on like a bunch of like different cooked vegetables, and um, sometimes they put tofu in it, and it's it's delicious. So let's talk about the the huge hit that started as just like this little thing on TikTok. So in January. On TikTok, you posted saying, I don't know if this is a bop or what. And it was the beginning of I'm Not Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It was insane. Did you put them, like, did you put other songs like that online going, I don't know if this is anything? I mean, or was that the first time that you kind of let that out to the world? Yeah. I mean, all of the other posts that I've done have all just been like completed songs. Cause like, that's what I thought that people wanted to see, you know, like they want to see the completed thing, but I find that going back to just like the TikTok world of everything is kind of stripped down and everything is, it's got this weird like balance between like fake and very real. It depends on like what your algorithms send to you kind of thing. And, um, yeah, I I just wanted to like bring people along on the songwriting journey. It was kind of my like my desperate post of being like, I don't know what you want from me. So like here, do you like this song maybe? And <laughs> I guess they did because <laughs> it became I'm not pretty. And what was the process like for that with you putting just like a little snippet of the tune out? How did it then become the full song? Yeah, I wrote the song or like I wrote just the hook that I posted on January 1st and posted it on January 1st and that's all that I had written and then Elijah Woods started producing it and like it started blowing up and I was like oh my god like there's like it's happening (laughs) like you need to write the rest of the song so I ended up writing the rest of the song with Elijah in 48 hours and then three days later we released it onto all digital streaming platforms. Is that the first time that you had a co-writer or was that something new? No, I've been, I've been writing with people for years. I started my career actually as an EDM top liner for EDM producers all over the world. And so um, it was really funny. A lot of people were like, how is it writing like from a distance and just from your basement pretty much? And I was like, it's fine. I've been doing this for like three years. I'm all, I'm all trained up for that. But um, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience writing with with Elijah. He is just a dream to work with. He's just one of the most talented producers I've ever met. Yeah, so you put it online and within a day, it had a million views. Yeah. Yeah. What happens from there? Like, you hear about people that have these explosive moments on TikTok. It used to be YouTube, and now it's TikTok. What was the process from having that song just absolutely explode online to... Um, getting representation and working on new stuff like what's that like for you as an artist it was it was insane like I'm still in denial of that like it even happened like it just doesn't seem real it sounds like this just happened to like a a close friend of mine (laughs) like it's just crazy that the this song went viral and the fact that we 
yeah, we recorded it in two days and released it three days later. And then in the first weekend, it ended up getting a million streams just on Spotify. So it's been, it's been climbing ever since. And I think now we're at like over 60 million collective streams, which is absolutely insane. And Ryan Tedder, very famous producer and frontman of the band One Republic, he signed you to his label, right? Yeah, so I did a joint signing with Republic and with Ryan Tedder, which is also a dream. I mean, Republic is such a family. Everyone is so down to earth. And same with Ryan. I mean, like my first writing session with him was, he just gave me so many amazing pointers, not only just as like an artist and in how to like create music, but just in how to carry yourself in the music industry and, and how to navigate what's going on and so i'm very thankful that he's like taken me under his wing and he's he's just such a standout guy so you're in ottawa right now and what is it that you're doing i am writing a bunch a bunch of music and um i am i just filmed a music video so just be expecting that soon i'm very excited and yeah just yeah, writing as much as I possibly can is pretty much <laughs> my life. It's it's been it's been a really really fun time. Very very grateful. It's very good. I find it fascinating people who can write songs. Um, I also started singing before I could talk, but oh cool! It didn't, it didn't lead anywhere. But my mother would tell me stories about how I would be humming Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in the hospital, and someone not not when I was a newborn, <laughs> but. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's amazing. Yeah, I was just born and here I come out now. And I know I was a, I, I was a sick child, so I was in and out, but I would be uh, humming Beethoven and people were like, whoa, it's a, but I did not end up writing any songs. And I look back at some of my poetry and it's super cringy. So just uh, to have that talent to be able to write songs that aren't super cringy, that people connect to and, <laughs> you know, putting it out, it must be uh, really, uh, freeing for you in a way is it yeah it's it's very much like it like i said it's it's total therapy for me like i'm i just i i feel like i need to do this or i think i would literally go insane if i didn't and i'm just thankful that it's also a career that i'm able to do i'm just yeah i i pretty much just write songs just to do it and then the fact that i'm able to do this as as a career is amazing well, thank you so much for chatting with me. And it's really nice to get to know you. And it's lovely to play your new single, I'm Not Pretty. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for having me.